1992, commissioned by the Technical Advisory Committee on Water Defenses, or TAW, tests are conducted at the large wave flume of Delft Hydraulics. The main purpose of the tests is to determine the relationship between earlier established overtopping criteria on dikes and the experience of these criteria in practice. The tests are conducted on a grass dike built into the flume. The outer slope has a gradient of one in four. The inner slope has a gradient of one in two and a half. The guidelines for the design of river dikes lists three criteria for wave overtopping. These criteria are expressed in terms of litres per second for every one metre stretch of dike. The criteria vary according to the quality of the dike's inner slope. During the tests, it proves very difficult to achieve an exact setting of the three overtopping criteria values. That is why the achieved overtopping discharges deviate slightly from the desired criteria. For dikes with a thick and well-maintained grass cover on the crest and inner slope, an amount of overtopping of 10 litres per second for every one metre stretch of dike is considered acceptable. If no additional protective measures are taken, the slope must be as flat as possible without any structure, fencing or trees. The reason being that the water flowing down the inner slope can reach a speed of several metres per second. In the test, using regular waves, a freeboard of 1 metre 80 is set, a wave height of 1 metre 91, a wave steepness of 5%, resulting in an average overtopping discharge of 10 litres per second for every 1 metre stretch of dike. This test gives the most realistic idea of what an overtopping discharge of 10 litres per second for every 1 metre stretch of dike actually looks like. Every wave produces roughly the same amount of overtopping. It's clear that during the short time that the wave washes over the crest of the dike, the overtopping discharge is much higher. With irregular waves, however, of the kind that occur in nature, not every wave will overtop. On the other hand, though, there will be some high waves causing a very large amount of overtopping. With an average overtopping discharge of 10 litres per second for every one metre stretch, there will be occasional peaks of 300 to 400 litres per second. With such waves, more than one cubic metre of water will wash over every one metre of the dike's crest. A criterion of one litre per second for every one metre stretch applies for an inner slope of clayish soil with a not particularly well-tended grass cover. Here too, it's the larger waves that cause most of the overtopping discharge. 
Because a low overtopping discharge is set, it may take some time before an overtopping wave occurs. If the criterion is 0.1 litre per second, the inner slope may consist of sandy non-homogeneous material. This test, with an overtopping discharge of 0.4 litres per second, most closely approached the criterion. It's clear that we're talking here of minimal overtopping discharge. The quantities of water that wash over the dike here can be compared to a good rain shower. So, the criterion of 0.1 litre per second means hardly any overtopping at all. Consequently, overtopping waves occur very seldom, and therefore it may take a long time before one can be noticed. It's not only the condition of the grass cover and the soil underneath that determine a dike's permissible overtopping discharge. The availability of a dike watch can also play a part. Here, the overtopping discharge exceeded 25 litres per second per metre. In the course of this test, the volunteer dike watch lost his balance several times. Without his safety line, he would have been washed off the dike. That is why, in similar situations, inspection and repair of a dike under these wave conditions is not possible. Also in practice, as opposed to a test situation, the risk of a gale force 12 must be taken into account. In those circumstances, a dike supervisor on the spot must consider it inadvisable to send a dike watch along the dike.